Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to discuss binary ionic compounds and chemical formulas. Today's essential question, which remember you need to answer in your summary, is how are ions combined to become electrically neutral? For today's lecture, make sure you have your periodic tables handy, and if you need to use it, your orbital diagram handout as well. All right, um, quick little bit about formation of ionic compounds in a quick little review. Cations and anions have opposite charges. So cations, if you remember, become ions by losing electrons, which gives them a positive charge. Anions become ions by gaining electrons, so they're going to end up with a negative charge. Now, Positives and negatives attract. Okay, they really, really like each other. If a cation sees an anion walking by, he's going to be very attracted. He's going to be like, man, I want to hook up with that anion. Okay, positives and negatives attract. So these opposite charges form an attraction that is going to bind these guys together. They're going to hook up. They're going to hook up. And they're going to, that's called an ionic bond. An ionic compound is when these cations and anions hook up, they form an electrically neutral group of ions joined by what we call elect electrostatic forces. That's a fancy way of saying that positives and negatives are attracted to each other. So binary ionic compounds, that's when you've got a cation and an anion that hook up, they're hooked together, that's called a binary ionic compound. So they're made up of metal cations and non-metal anions. Okay. And this here is hugely important, hugely important. In any sample of an ionic compound, the total number of positive charges of the cations must equal the total number of negative charges of the anions. So think about that. I didn't say the total number of cations needs to equal the total number of anions. It's the total number of positive charges needs to equal the total number of negative charges. Okay? All right, let's talk about formulas. First, the basic definition of a formula. A formula is something that tells you both the type and the number of elements or ions in a compound. All right, you guys all know at least one formula. The formula of water, right? What's the formula of water? H2O. So this formula tells you that water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Further, it tells you that there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. Okay, so again, a formula tells you both the type and the number of elements or ions in a compound. And a compound is two or more atoms hooked up. Okay. So um, superscripts, I'm going to put this back here. Superscripts are whole number written below and to the right of an element symbol. Um, and that is used to denote the number of atoms in the formula. So right there. Okay, so that two is a superscript. It's written below and to the right of hydrogen. So it tells you that there are two hydrogens. Okay. Remember the idea of electroneutrality. Fancy word. That means that these ionic compounds have to be neutral. Okay. If you remember when we talked about ions, I told you to make an atom happy, it wanted to be like a noble gas, right? So atoms want to be noble, but they actually want more than that. They also want to be neutral, okay? They want to be noble and neutral. So you made them happy when we, when we made them into ions by making them noble, like a noble gas, but then they were bummed out because they have a charge, so we're going to hook them up. We're going to make them neutral. Okay, this is it. We are going to learn how to write formulas for binary ionic compounds. This is the important part of the lecture here. So the first thing you want to do is write out the electron configuration for the metal 
and determine how many electrons it should lose to follow the octet rule. So let's say our metal is sodium. Okay. Sodium has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Okay. So to be, he's a metal, so he's going to be losing electrons. He's going to lose those two. So sodium is going to be Na1+. Plus. Okay. Next, we need to write out the electron configuration for the nonmetal and determine how many electrons it should gain to follow the octet rule. So for our example, we'll use oxygen. Oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So he needs to, be, to become 2p6, he has to add two more electrons. So he's going to be O, 2 minus. Now, write down the cation and the anion side by side, um, and you'll note that I said cation and then anion. We have to do it in that order. So we had Na1 plus for our cation and O2 minus for our anion. Okay? Now we want to make them neutral. So you're going to add more cations or anions as needed until the compound is neutral. Remember, that means you have the, the same number of positive and negative charges, not the same number of positive and negative atoms or ions. Okay, so if we look here, we have a 1 plus and a 2 minus. That is not neutral, right? Can we add another sodium? Now we have a total of 1 plus, 2 plus. We have 2 plus and we have 2 minus. So now we've got a situation where the atoms are now like a noble gas in the form of ions and we've made them neutral. So now what we have left to do is to write our formula. So you're going to rewrite the formula with the correct number of ions as subscripts and without the charges because they cancel out. So you can see that we have two pluses and two minuses. So now you can start with Na. How many Na's do we have? One, two. So it's Na, two. O, how many O's do we have? Just one. And if there's one, it doesn't need a superscript or a subscript, sorry. So the formula for um, the sodium ion with the oxygen ion is Na2O. And that is the formula for the ionic compound of sodium and oxygen. All right, let's try this. At this point, hit pause. Try to do these by yourself. If you can't, go back, review the lecture a little bit, and then try. Then hit play and see how you did. All right, so for number one, we have calcium and chlorine. Calcium's our metal, so we'll start with that. And calcium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Because he's a metal, he becomes an ion by losing. He lost two electrons, so he's going to be Ca2+. Then we've got chlorine. Chlorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. He's a nonmetal, so he's going to gain one to become 3s2, 3p6, so he's going to be Cl1 minus. All right, so now let's write them side by side, Ca2 plus, Cl1 minus. Do our charges cancel out? They do not. So we could add another Cl1 minus. Do they cross out now? They do. We got a 2 plus and a 2 minus. So charges are gone. So our final answer is Ca. We only have one of them. So no, super, no subscript. 
CL, we have 1, 2. So the ionic, the ionic compound, the formula for the ionic compound, calcium and chlorine, is CaCl2. All right, magnesium and nitrogen. This one's a little bit more tricky. Magnesium is our metal, and he is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. For him to become, because he's a metal, he's going to be losing electrons to become an ion. He loses two, so he's Mg2+. Nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. And because he's a non-metal, he's going to be gaining electrons to become like an ion. And he gains three electrons, so he's going to be N3-. minus. We'll put these guys together side by side with the positive first, with the cation first. We have Mg2+, plus N3-. Minus. Okay? Those are most definitely not neutral. And is there any way to turn a 2 plus, to turn a 2 into a 3? Because all we can use is magnesium and nitrogen. The answer is no. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another magnesium. So now I have 4 plus and 3 minus. That didn't work. Okay, well, I'm going to try to add a nitrogen. Now we have 4 plus and 6 minus. Well, if I add one more magnesium, I now have 6 plus and 6 minus. So we have now canceled out the charges. So in our final answer, we have magnesium, 1, 2, 3, and nitrogen, 1 and 2. There you go. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with this, review, try it again. Otherwise, we'll do more of this tomorrow. Have a good one.